Today is my birthday, and to make it a tradition, I'm going to make a video on whatever the heck I want to talk about, despite how it may do in the analytical side of things. So sit down and enjoy me gushing over some fantastic sets. At the end, let me know what you think of these sets or which ones are your favorites. The only criteria I'm giving myself is that it has to either be core sets or side sets, so no dex, tins, or OCG sets. Number five was definitely my hardest pick. My top four I could think of fairly quickly, however when it came to nailing one down, that's when it became a challenge. I pinned it down to Dark Crisis, released at the end of 2003. Just looking at the pack cover shows an awesome color scheme of the blue and black, complemented by the cover card Exodia Necros. I've always loved this card as the dark counterpart to Exodia the Forbidden One. Shame to this date we have yet to see an official archetype for the Necros boss. The set is known for a variety of meta cards like Sukiyomi, Sakuretsu Armor, Skill Drain, and DD Warrior Lady. But there are also plenty of fun cards that, along with Necros, were used in the virtual world arc in the Yu-Gi-Oh anime. Shinato, Dark Flare Knight, Mirage Knight, and Berserk Dragon. Also introduced to the TCG were the Guardians and Archfiend archetypes. While I never cared for Guardians, the Archfiends I always thought were awesome, with their chess theme and general spooky design. We even got a retrain of Summon Skull! I opened so many packs for this and forever enjoyed pulling cards like the Dark Scorpions, Shizu's Fairy Monsters, or other general oddities, yet thematic nonetheless, like Judgment of Anubis. Dark Crisis is a set that may not strike you at first, and even still, it sticks to your mind like Ojama Trio tokens. I never said anything about boxes! Yes, number 4 is in Legendary Collection 3, Yugi's World, in the self-named Mega Pack released in October 2012. By far, this is the largest set in Yu-Gi-Oh, with a whopping 156 cards. Holy guacamole! Take that, Metal Raiders! What an absolute bonkers set this is. It's this gigantic set with a huge emphasis on Yu-Gi's cards, with dozens of rarity boosts and reprints. You get bumps on every everything from Skull Servant to Silver Fang to even Dark King of the Abyss. I don't know why he got a secret rare, but Konami sure seems to love him. And it's not just a lot of commons and only a few high rarities. There's actually quite a lot and there's bound to be something you like in the set. There even are some newer played cards like Solemn Warning and Summoner Monk, along with previously promo only cards like Sinister Serpent and Cosmo Queen. Hell, it's even the first and so far only TCG set to have Kanan the Sword Mistress. While newer sets don't tend to tickle my fancy, it is hard to pass up on Yugi's World. This set is a retro Yu-Gi-Oh duelist wet dream and is certainly a set I'd love to collect someday. Another side set for number 3, it's Tournament Pack 2. Yeah, of all of the OTS sets, it is the second season released on October 2002 that draws me in the most. I'm not sure what it is about it that I love so much. Perhaps the TP sets were always the misfit leftovers of the OCG. Maybe it's the fantastic art that TP2 tended to have droves of. Like, look at this set. It's like bird watching Birds of Paradise. And then, bam, a dinosaur and a zombie on a motorcycle and a stuffed animal and whatever the hell to Purin is. Not to mention, this is a set that introduced Morphing Jar to the TCG, which is surely the prominent fact of TP2. Sorry, Barrett Dragon. While most of the cards, aside from one and maybe one or two others, had any meta relevancy, Tournament Pack Season 2 is a lovably bizarre looking set that was branded into my mind way back then. And to top it all off, with this set, you could finally summon Cybersaurus with its fusion materials. The cosmic ballet goes on. Does anyone want to switch seats? P.S. Why didn't they just name Mikazuka no Yaiba Crescent Dragon instead? What an odd choice. We stay in 2002 for number 2, which is Metal Raiders, released at the end of June. Many people know of this set, after all, it is the second TCG core set. It opened the floodgates when it came to effect monsters like Sangan and Magician of Faith. It also pushed the boundaries of play by including some real heavy hitter back row cards like Mirror Force and Heavy Storm. 
Not to mention the brand new counter trap cards that brought strategy to a whole new level thanks to many negation cards in Solemn Judgment, Magic Jammer, Seven Tools of the Bandit, and Horn of Heaven. MRD certainly has a vibe going for it, and while my first game of Yu-Gi-Oh was on May 11th, 2002, with the Kaiba starter deck split in half with my older brother, in which he kicked my ass with blue eyes, yes he gave himself the better cards on my birthday, my first pack opening was this set, and to say it left an impression on me is not an understatement. Metal Raiders just feels itself with the entire card pool regardless if it's an awesome looking card like Gate Guardian or one of many trash cards like Skull Knight. You know what I mean? When you hear Metal Raiders, you instantly recall that unique aesthetic, so given that, plus my own history with the set, it is no surprise it is my number 2 pick. Number 1 is Pharaonic Guardian, released in July 2003. I first read about this set in an old Ghostmasters magazine that, yes, I managed to track down. Has there ever been a set bleeding more Yu-Gi-Oh than this? Yu-Gi-Oh is a series rooted in games and Egyptian thematic. PGD contains all of this series foundation, and then some. The set tells a story of an ancient Egyptian tomb, grave robbers, the curse of zombies, and other weird shit I have no idea how to explain. Like what even is Shape Snatch? Or what's the deal with Reversal Quiz? I like to think each card connects to tell one overarching story. For example, look at these cards back to back and tell me if you see anything. Necro Valley, Ordeal of a Traveler, Dark Scorpion Burglars, Non-Aggression Area, Trap Dust Shoot, Secret Pass to the Treasures, Barrel Behind the Door, you get the picture I hope. And that's just one example, one path to dissect the card by card journey. Almost every card in the set leaves a strong impression on the storytelling of Pharaonic Guardian, whomever they may be. While Metal Raiders may be my most personal pick, this 2003 set is simply everything that Yu-Gi-Oh was, is, and still be in my heart as corny as that sounds. Of course this list could always change, and if it does, great! More reason for me to geek out about more sets! Anyway, peace!